Here's a short video showing you how I installed a high quality strobe light on my Skywalker. Now this is not your typical Hobby King LED light. These strobes are normally sold to government agencies for official vehicles. You can see this and other models on websites such as Welland.com and strobesandmore.com. I got mine from a friend who I've known for years. This friend also is the one who clued me in on how to run high current electrical items on my plane without frying my multi-switch. So thanks Joe, this one is for you. This strobe is known as a 6LED hideaway, manufactured by Wellen. The cool thing about this particular strobe is that it has 25 different flashing modes. Now the first thing I did was I hooked it up to my multimeter to determine the current draw. The load was different depending on what flashing mode is being used, but the highest peak current I could detect was over 900 milliamps. This meant that I could not power it directly from my multi-switch, which has a limit of 500 milliamps. This is not a problem because I will just use a tiny 1 amp relay. Touching the white wire to the red positive power lead causes the flashing pattern to toggle through the 25 different flashing modes. This particular strobe is normally mounted on vehicles and it's very heavy. The first thing to do is pull off the four screws which hold the back plate on to see what's inside. Okay, um, now it appears the circuit board has been placed inside a plastic tray and then filled to the rim with some type of heavy waterproofing resin. So I need to lighten this thing up and I can already see this is going to take a little bit of work. Okay, I'm using a Dremel tool to basically sand and grind away as much of the plastic tray and the resin as possible. At the same time, I'm being very careful not to grind too far into the circuit board components. On the bottom, I cannot grind too much away because the circuit board was placed directly on it before the resin was poured in. You can see the tiny glint of metal here. It's probably a solder joint, so I'm not going any more in that direction. However, on the top, a corner of the resin has begun to give away, so I think I might just be able to carefully peel off the top layer. Here we go, it's coming off. I'm testing the strobe throughout this process to see that I have not damaged it. Okay, now I've gotten all the resin off down to the bare circuit board. Now, as with virtually all electronic circuit boards, this one is also static sensitive, so you want to keep from touching the components as much as possible. Okay, now we're gonna work on the strobe light itself. It seems very heavy, so I wanna remove some of this outer housing to lighten up. At first, I thought it was just plastic, but as it turns out, this housing is solid metal inside. I have determined the metal acts as a heat sink because of the fins on the underside. But I don't want a heat sink. I want this thing as light as possible so my plane doesn't sink when it is trying to carry it. Besides, I will only be powering it in the cool night air with wind blowing past it constantly, so I'm not worried about overheating issues. Okay, this heavy outer insulation also has to go. I will be removing almost all of this. I will leave a small section on here just to keep the wires from bending too much and possibly to help with mounting later. I can stick this in foam or something. Okay, now I have covered the exposed electronics with one piece of lightweight Gorilla Tape. Okay, now we are all ready to install. I have twisted the wiring to help prevent a magnetic field from developing or to help with interference with my radio gear. I also installed a servo plug at about the halfway point to make installation in my Skywalker easier. This LED strobe lost 185 grams with the Dremel diet. The total weight has been reduced to just 1.7 ounces. By comparison, the one meter LED strips on my wings weigh only a half ounce each. So this strobe weighs more than three times as much as a single one meter strip. The Skywalker is a beast though and she can handle the extra payload. Now as I was mentioning earlier, the current draw for this strobe is too high to power it directly from my multi-switch. My last video covered the multi-switch and how to use relays to power higher current draw equipment on your plane. I already have two relays installed for my port and starboard um, accessories. So I have installed a third 1 amp relay specifically for this strobe. After much deliberation, I have decided to install the strobe up high in an unused pan servo mount recess. The purpose of this strobe is to announce my presence to any full-size aircraft in the area at night. Since I almost always fly below 400 feet, a top-mounted strobe light will be easier for them to see, assuming they are flying at altitudes of 500 feet AGL and above. I looked at several mounting spots for the circuitry before deciding the forward battery compartment was the best bet. This will keep the components away from my vital autopilot and receiver equipment and possibly prevent interference issues. 
I have mounted a standard Radio Shack on off switch right next to it. This switch has the same effect as touching the white wire to the red positive and will let me cycle through all 25 flashing modes easily. And this is how my brand new strobe looks after being hot glued in. As you might recall from my last video, this is the strobe light that I had been using before. It was big and bulky and I strapped it to the top of my wing each time using the wing rubber bands. It was ugly and was just a pain to install each time. Coincidentally, the new strobe and components weighs exactly the same as the old one, which also weighs 1.7 ounces. That was a pretty good trade if you ask me. Okay, now let's give it a try. Now I'm using a multi-switch to power everything on here. It takes only one single channel to power on each light in turn. If you haven't seen my multi-switch video, again, you're missing out. And a fifth flip of my gear switch and the strobe light comes to life. This thing looks awesome on the ground. I can't wait to get it in the air. I woke up the next morning at about 3 a.m. and went flying. I was in the air by about 4 a.m. Here are some video clips of the new strobe in action. I took off with all lights on except the strobe because I thought it would hinder visibility and distract me. I had to do my takeoff run line of sight but I immediately put the goggles on after liftoff for climb out. When I got out to nearly two kilometers, I put the aircraft into auto circle mode and took off my fast sharks. I could clearly see the plane blinking away, so I set up the ground cam to film it. I can see the plane flying around even clearer than this video shows. You can see it as it circles around by itself. It's really visible.
Now landing is a little tricky at night. Um, I'm flying due east right now on final approach. I have the camera pointed in the direction of my airplane. And in order to keep curious UFO chasers at bay, I fly completely blacked out until I'm about 700 meters away. At this point, I turn on my landing light only. That's my forward-facing light. Now, since it is inky blackout and I can't see my covert landing strip through my live video feed, what I do is I peek out of my goggles every four or five seconds to make sure I am aligned with the runway, which is a very long strip of grass about 50 feet wide. I have tall grass and briars on my starboard side, and on the port side I have a big old long run of power poles, so it is imperative that I stay toward the right before slipping into the left at the last seconds for touchdown. Now at about 300 meters out, I turn on the rest of the lights. The landing will have to be line of sight because there is no moon out and it is just inky black through my goggles. I'm drifting to the right on purpose because I want to stay away from those power poles. Now you can see here how my wingtip LED lights are an immense help in landing. It is easy to monitor and control glide slope just based on sink rate alone. To keep from stalling, I just maintain about 30% power all the way in until I'm close to touching down. I hope you liked the video. If you are the type that never does anything halfway like I am, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned to see more.